All right, now by assumption, we have that A. Today we interrupt the regular uploads to make another math public service announcement. This time we're talking about subset notation. When I first learned basic set theory, I was taught the canonical biblical notation for subset and proper subset, which is as follows. If A is a subset of B, we write this, A subset B. If A is a proper subset of B, that is, A is a subset of B but it is not equal to B itself we write A, proper subset of B. This is good intuitive notation and it even forms a nice analogy with less than and less than or equal to notation. That is, if we have two numbers x and y and x is a less than or equal to y, we write this. And on the other hand, if x is strictly less than y, in other words, x is less than y and x is not equal to y, we write this. This forms a very nice analogy with the subset notation. You can think of this notation as being A, proper subset or equal to B. That is what it means, while this means A proper subset of B. The line underneath means allow for equality in the relation. Now you might be wondering, how on earth could this possibly get screwed up? And I asked myself the same thing, but you know, in the end, it did get screwed up. There's an alternative notational practice for subset and proper subset. I call it the deviant notation. This is how it looks. If we have that A is a subset of B, we will write this, A subset of B. Notice that the symbol for subset is the former symbol for proper subset. Okay, so given that the old symbol for proper subset is now the symbol for subset, we have a new symbol for proper subset. So if A is a proper subset of B, this is what we write in the deviant notation. A proper subset or equal to, but not really, B. Now this looks absolutely ridiculous of course, but you might be thinking, so what, what's the big deal? Just let people use the notational practice that they want, and as long as it's clear and unambiguous, what's the problem? Well, here's the problem, and this is actually quite alarming and scary when you think about it. You may have noticed that I actually used this symbol myself in a recent video. Now why did I do that? I hate this notation. It's ridiculous. I took a shower after I used it. So why did I use it? Well, here's the thing. Because of this practice, this symbol has now become ambiguous. If someone writes this, we can't really be sure if they are a good person writing proper subset or if they are a deviant using it as subset. And the more this notational practice is used and catches on, the more ambiguous this symbol becomes. And the more ambiguous this symbol becomes, the more people will opt to use this monstrosity in order to be absolutely clear to everyone that they mean proper subset. What does this sound like to you? The more it is used, the more ambiguous this symbol becomes, the more it spreads. And it even spreads to people that don't like the notation and don't want to use it. This notational practice is behaving exactly like a virus. This symbol and this usage of the proper subset symbol is a viral plague on mathematical literature. And there seems to be no way to stop it. The more it gets used, the more it must be used. So how can we kill off this virus? Well, I've thought a lot about this because I think about important things. And my conclusion is that the only way that we can end this plague is to all band together as mathematicians, and to agree to stop using this notation, even if some people may think we're talking about subset when we want to say proper subset, just hold true to the light 
and use this symbol. In order to bring awareness to this issue, I went ahead and started an online petition that you can sign to pledge support for the eradication of this notational convention. I will leave a link to that down below. This has been a math public service announcement from Epic Math Time. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.